I'm uh, Bernard Ntauturi, the Archbishop of the Anglican Church of Burundi and Bishop of Matana Diocese. But I'm also a partner of Christian Aid, and that's why I have come to this Christian Aid to discuss our partnership, but also to raise the attention in this and the awareness in this campaign of climate change and justice, tax evasion as diminishing the support that we have from developed countries. Now the theme of your visit is keeping the promise, isn't it? And in what way are we in the West failing to keep our promises to the developing world? As someone who comes from the poorest country in the world, Burundi being on the bottom, I have come really to make a call and an insistent call to the developed countries so that they would keep the promises they always give to African countries and other developing countries. And here we'll give examples. If you look at the Millennium Development Goals, now everybody knows that uh, the target will not be met to half the poverty level by 2015. That's because what was expected to be given was not given as capacity building, as money, financial transfer, but also technology and knowledge. Secondly, the promise of 0 0.7 of uh, the national income that was to be set aside for development countries. Very few countries in industrialized and developed countries have met that target. And that's, those are the issues that we are saying. But thirdly, the agreement that we need from Copenhagen Conference so that the climate change and meeting the emission of the carbon dioxide will be met so that at least 40% of that emission will be diminished. And that will contribute to the well-being of the people, population in developing countries. Climate change for us is a justice issue. And we do that because we see the effect, the impact of the, of the world warming, the climate warming. We see the impact or in agriculture, where many countries in Africa are agricultural, where population, more than 90%, live on agriculture. And what is the impact? How is it affecting the lives of ordinary people in your country? In Burundi, as I said, we are 90%, the population 90%, if not even more agricultural. And they depend on rains, the regular falling of rains. And normally we expect rains in September, but this time we have got rains in November, which means three months of uh, drought, of dry season. We normally get rains eight months per year, but these last years we only get five to six months. This has diminished the rate of productivity of food, which means there are more famine, more people who go without their daily rate of ration or pool of food. But also this has affected the, the, the trade as far as food is concerned. So that's one aspect. But the second aspect is that uh, the normal children will not grow with the normal way with nutrition that is required. And thirdly, where agriculture products as the only income generating products, where we don't have mining or minerals, that shows that if we do not get enough rain, if the soil is deteriorating every, every year, that will affect the general well-being of the population. And is this due to climate change? That's due to climate change because, I mean, I have seen that last week. You also had an impact of uh, inundation in the northern parts of uh, this country. And in Burundi, I could give you an example. Just two weeks ago, we had <coughs> rains, but uh, those rains destroyed a hundred and even more than a hundred homes of poor people. Having a home in Burundi is really almost a life saving investment. So if your home is destroyed in one night, that means a family of 10 people do not have where to live. And we do not have insurance as you do. This family will be in tents if they get tents, 
or we'll be staying with other people. So that shows how our lives are disturbed, destroyed by this climate change. Now, could um, a putting an end to corporate tax evasion, for example, help to ease your problems by um, creating less of, an ink, of a cash outflow from the country and bring more cash in? Bringing more cash in, I think that uh, what would help the African countries is that we need cash inflow so that people who are poor may have cash, may do something, may create employment. So as much as this evasion, which I think is calculated around $160 billion or euros, this, this shows that if that money was given for development, that would make a difference. The second area where I found that tax evasion could make a difference if that was tackled po properly is that it would build the capacity, the knowledge of our people. Because money only is not enough, but people should have also the skills to own and to do their own development. So capacity building, but also support financially, that would help. And when you come somewhere like London and and walk around or drive around and you see the prosperity here, it must seem an almost impossible task to get your message across of what it's actually like for your people um, living their lives in conditions which we can barely imagine. There are people, of course, if you come in London or go visit any other European countries and you remember what's going on in Africa, the poor people, you find that what you call the poor people here are are not at all comparable with what we call poor people, where people are not able to eat, have no water, clean water, have, cannot send their school, their children to school, cannot access medicine or health. So poverty in Africa is uncomparable with uh, what we would call poverty here. Though I know that there is poverty also in these countries. So helping our countries and also meeting the minimum that they have, your countries have promised, your government, here then we call upon the political will of those who are in decision-making positions, the political will of those who are in power so that they remember. They remember that uh, we are neighbors now. Globalization has brought us together. And I think this investment in other developing countries will be a message, as far as Christians are concerned, of good neighborhood, but will be also a message of saying, yes, it is a security issue. I think the West is going to find it increasingly difficult to evade its responsibilities when it comes to the developing world. How many people are we talking about? What, how big is your population? Burundi is a small country. We have 8 million people. Uh, but uh, if you take the whole population of Africa and the opportunities and potentialities that we could develop if we worked together, that would make a difference. That would change what is happening in Africa and other developing countries. So we are talking about, in Burundi alone, more than 6 million or 7 million people who need and whose lives will change and be better if the uh, UK or other countries could invest or contribute the 0.7% of their income. And is that the number of people in your country who are living below the poverty line? Yeah, those are even more than that who are believing the $2 per day. That's, uh, that's, that's, that's the, the, the main the people that we have. Unbelievable. And in the whole of Africa, uh, just remind me, what's the population of the whole of Africa? I think the South Sub-Saharan Africa will be more than uh, 500 million people. And of that, what And proportion? of that, I would say 75% will be living under the poverty line.